Hi, I'm Tom, and today I'm going to be reacting to the infamous Jenga block scene from The Big Short. So my background is in investment banking. I used to work in corporate finance for the largest chunk of my time in investment banking. However, my first graduate rotation was in notes and structuring. So you may have seen other reaction videos to the Jenga block scene in The Big Short. However, I can give some real insights into asset-backed securities and on some of the terminology they're using. It's pretty confusing, right? Does it make you feel bored or stupid? Well, it's supposed to. The Big Short focuses on the events in the run-up to the financial crisis of 07 and 08, whereby a subprime mortgage crisis led to a housing bubble that in turn culminated in the worst economic disaster since the Wall Street crash of 1929. So in the scene where Jared, played by Ryan Gosling, he's pitching buying credit default swaps against mortgage-backed securities. Now, a credit default swap is a type of credit derivative which offers insurance um, against the default of any bonds. In this case, we're looking at mortgage-backed securities. And Jared's theory is that there was so much instability in the housing market with mortgages that were being issued. Uh, you might have heard of ninja loans, people with no income, no jobs verification, that it was just inevitable that there would be default on these bonds. And the hedge fund managers, by buying these credit default swaps, could make a significant amount of money betting against these mortgage-backed securities. So let's get straight into the video. This is amazing. Okay, hi. How are you? Have a seat. Hey, Mr. Bennett from Deutsche Bank. Here we have. Looking at the front page of the pitch deck that Jared has just put forward in front of these hedge fund managers, we can see that it reads shorting home equity mezzanine tranches. Now that's a lot of terminology to get our heads around. If we start with shorting, shorting just means you're betting against. So if the value of said asset were to go down, the investors shorting this would be there to profit. Mezzanine comes from the Italian word mezzano, which literally means middle. So if we think about the tranches, tranche meaning a portion of something, and we take a mortgage-backed security, which is a bundle of various mortgage loans put together. Now, mezzanine simply means it sits in the middle of those two tranches. Why are they pitching to sell this mezzanine tranche of mortgage-backed securities? Well, because the very bottom layer is quite likely to default in the case of uh, these mortgage-backed securities, whereas the middle layer is set to receive a much bigger payout as they're deemed less likely to default by all the other banks. Yeah, I'm sorry. You smell that? What is that? What? What's that smell? The cologne? No. Opportunity. No, money. Oh, okay. I smell money. Okay. The reason why Jared is pitching to sell these mezzanine mortgage-backed security bonds um, is the fact that there is instability in the housing market. You may have come across the term ninja loans, where no income, no jobs verification, where mortgages were being handed to people without any proof of income or proof of any employment. So naturally, there was going to be some element of risk and a bubble forming in the housing market. So perhaps if we now take a look at the next part of this video. So how many people have you talked to about this trade? A few. There's definitely some interest. Oh, my boss would have my ass. And I'm crazy, Jim. Get lost, Jared. Fuck you. Which is why you're here talking to us, a wrong number. Sounds like there's a lot of interest. All right. A few people have invited us in just to laugh at me on this deal. Is that you? No. Is that what this is? That's not what this is. That's just how Mark is. As seen in the clip, practically no one is interested in Jared's idea of buying credit default swaps on these mortgage-backed securities. First reason is that those were bankers we saw within that video there, um, and they're the ones who are actually issuing these mortgage-backed securities in the first place. So there'd be a conflict. But on the other hand, who would in their right mind believe that the entire US housing market would fail and there would be such a high level of default? This is your basic mortgage bond, all right? The originals were simple. They were just thousands of AAA mortgages bundled together, guaranteed by the US government. The modern ones are different. They're private, and they're made up of layers of tranches. The 
highest level triple A's getting paid first, the lowest rated B's getting paid last, taking on defaults first. Now, obviously, if you're buying B's, you can make more money, but they're a little risky. Sometimes they fail. So here we get to see the iconic Jenga scene where this big Jenga block represents a mortgage-backed security. Where at the very top of the Jenga block, you have these AAA, fairly safe, riskless mortgages that are highly credit rated. Whereas at the very bottom, you get the opposite, much higher probability of default mortgages that are C, double C, triple C, considered as junk. Now, the point we're trying to make with the Jenga is if you take enough blocks out, starting at the bottom, you take a triple C mortgage, Jenga piece out, that represents a default, you take another, another default, another default, the Jenga tower starts swaying. Then if you take enough pieces out and they start creeping up to this middle mezzanine layer, and all of a sudden these B, double B, triple B bonds start defaulting, then all of a sudden this Jenga tower will collapse. And that in itself is a proxy for the US housing market collapsing. Somewhere along the line, these Bs and double Bs went from a little risky to dog shit. Where's the trash? Behind you. I'm talking rock bottom FICO scores. No income verification. Adjustable rates, dog shit. So there's a few terms we want to get our heads around here. The first one is FICO scores. It's just to do with the US consumer credit level. Uh, when we talk about no income verification, it's just the fact you can't prove on a piece of paper on employee slip that you're actually earning income formally. And then finally, when we talk about adjustable rates, this just means a variable rate of interest on a mortgage. The default rates are already up from one to 4%, fellas. And if they rise to 8%, and they will, a lot of these triple Bs are going to zero too. And that, you're too close, is an opportunity. Okay, you're saying that at 8% the bonds fail and we are already at 4%? That's right. If they go to eight, it's Armageddon. Yeah, that's right. So as Jared mentions, the default rates have already gone up from 1% to 4% in a very short space of time. And this isn't widespread knowledge and that's already a huge increase. And if, as Jared points out, they're set to go up to almost 8%, if we think back to this Jenga block, what we're saying is that the defaults, the losses, might creep up from this very bottom layer up to this middle mezzanine layer with these double Bs and triple B mortgage-backed securities line. Now, if this were to be the case and there would be defaults occurring at this tranche, then by these hedge fund managers buying into this credit default swap and having the short position on this mezzanine layer, they would be set for a very significant payout. How come nobody's talking about this? You're completely sure of the math. Look at him. That's my quant. Your what? My quantitative. My math specialist. Look at him. You notice anything different about him? Look at his face. That's pretty racist. Look at his eyes. I'll give you a hint. His name's Yang. He won a national math competition in China. He doesn't even speak English. Yeah, I'm sure of the math. Actually, my name's Jiang, and I do speak English. Jared likes to say I don't because he thinks it makes me seem more authentic. And I got second in that national math competition. So a quant or quantitative, um, as Jared points out, is someone who uses statistical mathematical methods to analyze a set of data. Uh, in this particular case, what they're looking at is mortgage-backed securities and the probability of these mortgage-backed securities defaulting. So he's very likely working with a huge data set here. He might be using coding or programming in order to predict the level of defaults within these mortgage-backed securities. So if we take a look at quants more broadly, they do get paid a very generous amount. Uh, they can usually work in hedge funds when they're trying to help analyze the investment ideas. They can also work for banks on the sell side. How can these underlying bonds be as bad as you say? It wouldn't be legal. <clears throat> Nobody knows what's in them. Nobody knows what's in the bonds. I've seen some that are 65% triple-A rated that I know for a fact are filled with 95% subprime shit with FICOs below 550. Get the fuck out of here. You want me to really blow your mind? When the market deems a bond too risky to buy, what do you think we do with it? Take a guess. I don't know, you tell me. All right. You think we just warehouse it on the books? No, we just repackage it with a bunch of other shit that didn't sell and put it into a CDO. A CDO? Yes. 
a CDO. What is that? This is where we take a bunch of Bs, double Bs, and triple Bs that haven't sold, and we put them in a pile. And when the pile gets large enough, the whole thing is suddenly considered diversified. And then the whores at the rating agency give it a 92, 93% AAA rating. No questions asked. Oh, oh, say that again. A collateralized debt obligation. It's important to understand because it's what allowed a housing crisis to become a nationwide economic disaster. So collateralized debt obligation, or CDO. This is a case where we're taking a lot of these mortgage-backed securities and we're repackaging them or rebundling them all together. What was interesting is that they're taking the lower rated mortgage-backed securities, putting enough of them together so that the credit rating agencies would deem this as diversified and hence it would get a very high, generous AAA rating, when inherently the sum of the parts aren't very safe financial instruments themselves. The reason why it's collateralized debt obligation is the fact that the collateral is the promised bond repayments of those mortgage-backed securities. Um, and as Jared touches at the very end of that clip, this is really what blew a housing market up into a complete economic collapse. Hold on, so mortgage bonds are dog shit. CDOs are dog shit wrapped in cat shit. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Institutions treat these CDOs like they're as solid as treasury bonds and they're going to zero. No, it can't be right. There, there were 500 billion in housing bonds sold last year alone. The ratings agencies, the banks, the fucking government? You're saying they're all asleep at the wheel? Yeah. For those who haven't seen The Big Short, I would thoroughly recommend giving it a watch. It's a very informative, as much as it is a funny movie. It's highly rated by the critics. It's got a star-studded cast, to say the least. Um, and it's able to break down these seemingly complex financial topics and distill it to a very entertaining watch. A's, zero. B's, zero. Double B's, zero. Triple B's, zero. And then that happens. What is that? That's America's housing market. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button below, subscribe, and leave us your thoughts in the comments section. See you in the next video.